We're going to evaluate the integral of 3x minus 5x squared over 3x minus 1 times x minus 1 squared dx. As we can see, this is a rational function. So to evaluate this integral, we're going to use partial fractions. Before we perform partial fraction decomposition, we want to confirm that the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, and that's true in this case. The numerator of degree 2 and the denominator is of degree 3. Also, we need to confirm that there are no common factors in the numerator and denominator. Again, this requirement holds in this case. If we quickly factor the numerator, we'll see that there are no common factors. So I'm going to rewrite this rational expression right here on the side and perform the partial fraction decomposition. For that, I need to observe what kind of factors I have in the denominator. So first of all, I can see that denominator is already factored, right? So here I have the following factors. I have two linear factors. So 3x minus 1 is a linear factor and x minus 1 is a linear factor. However, um, in this case, we have repeating factor. So that's this power 2 means that I have x minus 1 twice, right? There are two factors like that. So I have repeated linear factor. This is how we're going to decompose this expression. Now, each linear factor is going to have its own fraction. So 3x minus 1 is going to have its own fraction. And now when it comes to the repeated factor, uh, here we're going to have several fractions. So we're going to have one fraction for x minus 1 to the first power. So it means it's just x minus 1. And we're going to have another fraction for x minus 2 to the second power. So in general, the rule goes like, like that. So you have to create fractions such that you go from power 1 up to the highest power here. So in this case, I have to go up to power 2, power 1, power 2, and then I stop. If it was power 3, then I would add one more fraction with x minus 1 to the third power in the denominator, and so on and so forth. Okay, so I got that. Now, what do we put in the numerator? So the rule goes like this. If the denominator is a linear factor, the numerator will always be just a constant. So I'll use a to denote that constant. So here is a linear factor, the constant in the numerator, I'm going to use b. Linear factor... The numerator is the constant, so it's c, right? So that's what we always put above denominators that are linear factors. And now our goal is to find a, b, and c. To do that, I'm going to combine those fractions together. To combine them, they have to... So I split it up, and now I'm combining back, right? To combine fractions, meaning add or subtract, they have to have same denominator. So what will be the least common denominator? Well, the original denominator will be the least common denominator, right? So I need to multiply each fraction by what it's missing. So the first fraction is missing x minus 1 squared part, right? So I'm going to multiply by x minus 1 squared on the bottom and on the top. Now, how about the second? What is it missing? I have x minus 1, so it's missing 3x minus 1. Right? And it's also missing, well, my LCD is x minus 1 squared, right? And here I only have x minus 1. So it means that it's missing another x minus 1. Okay, so this means that numerator should also be multiplied by 3x minus 1 and x minus 1. And finally, the last fraction, we have x minus 1 squared, so we're missing 3x minus 1, 3x minus 1 here. And the numerator is being multiplied by 3x minus 1 as well. Now, this will create the same denominator, right? So it means that I'm ready to combine all those fractions. The denominator is 3x minus 1 times x minus 1 squared. What is the numerator? The numerator is a times x minus 1 squared plus b times 3x minus 1 times x minus 1 plus c times 3x minus 1. And the next step will be to simplify the numerator. Okay, so that's a times x minus 1 squared gives me 
x squared minus 2x plus 1. Right? Remember, you can just write it twice x minus 1 times x minus 1 and FOIL that. Or you can apply square of a difference formula. Plus b times 3x squared negative 3x minus x minus 4x plus 1 plus c times 3x minus 1. I don't really need to drag the denominator with me, but oh well, I just wrote it. So Next, I will distribute a, b, and c. So that's ax squared minus 2ax plus a plus 3bx squared minus 4bx plus b plus 3cx minus c, like that. 3x minus 1 times x minus 1 squared. And then finally, what I need to do, so where I'm going towards? Well, I am going towards the following. I will need to compare the numerators. I want to show that the left-hand side, or I should say where I started this rational expression, is the same as this rational expression. So that will help me to find a, b, and c. So I'll need to find a, b, and c such that numerators are the same. And denominator is already the same, right? So that means that how do I find a, b, and c? So what I'll do, I'll need to compare or set equal the coefficients of the original numerator with the coefficients of this numerator that involves a, b, and c. Um, so I'll write down the original numerator, so 3x minus 5x squared. That should be equal this numerator. But in order for me to compare that easily, I will combine like terms and I will rewrite it so coefficients are obvious. So what I, what I mean is that here, let's say I have like terms that involve x squared, right? What I'll do, I'll put them together and I factor out x squared, so I'll get a plus 3b x squared. I factored out, I just put it at the end, right? a plus 3b x squared. Now I also combine terms involving x. I have three of them. And um, I'll do something, I'll factor out x. So plus, let's see, if I factor out x, I'll get, and I have to use uh, the proper sign, so negative 2a minus 4b plus 3 c x okay and then what's left are the constants a plus b minus c these are just the, the constants a plus b minus c now now this is what i'll do i'll set equal as i already said uh, i'll set equal the coefficients so what is the coefficient of x squared on the left hand side well it's negative five so it means that for the left hand side to be equal to the right hand side um, a plus 3b should be the same as or equal to negative 5. So set equal. Set equal. Same thing with the coefficient of x. The coefficient of x on the left hand side is, should be the same as the coefficient of x on the right hand side. That means that negative 2a minus 4b plus 3c should be equal 3. So set those equal. Set equal. And finally, constant from the left hand side should be equal to the constant on the right hand side. But what is the constant on the left hand side? Well, I don't see the constant. Well, if I don't see it, it means it's 0. So I have plus 0, right? So the constant on the left should be equal, and what is the constant on the right? a plus b minus c, that is the constant on the right hand side. So a plus b minus c equals zero. And by doing that, I end up with a system. So in this case, since I had a, b, and c, it's a system of three, of three equations with three unknowns. How do we solve a system of three unknowns and three equations? Uh, we do it this way. So first we want to get down to a system that has only two equations and two unknowns. For example, I already have one equation that has only two unknowns and that's the first one. It means that I want to use the, se the, the second and the third equations to get 
down to also only two unknowns and I want them to be the same as, as the first equation. So I want to have just A and B. Long story. So what that means is that I want to use the second and the third equations to eliminate C. So I'll use elimination method. So eliminate C, I'll have to create opposites. I have three C, so here I want to have negative three C, right? So I'll multiply third equation by three. And that means that it's gonna look like this. Three uh, A plus three B minus three C equals three times zero is zero, right? And now I will add those two, add. As I add them, okay, so I will rewrite what I have over here. I'm gonna copy down the first equation, a plus three b equals negative five. And now I'm gonna write down what I'm gonna end up with as I add the second and then this updated third equation. Negative two a plus three a is just a. Negative four b plus three b is negative b. And then neg uh, positive three c plus negative three c, well, those two cancel each other out. And now the right hand side is three plus zero, that's three. And now by doing that, I reduced my original system to just one system that has only two unknowns. And here we'll use either elimination method or substitution method to find either A or B. So what can we do? Uh, we can use, we can continue with elimination method. So let's say if I want to eliminate A's, it means that I have to have opposites. Um, I will multiply the second equation by negative one and that will produce the following. Negative A plus B equals negative three. And now I will add those two. So A and negative A will cancel. 3B plus B is 4B. And now the right hand side is negative five plus negative three, that's negative eight. So from here, B equals negative two. Okay, we found B. Once you find one constant, uh, stay within that same system and use it to find the second constant. So from here, I can, from the system, from one of those two equations, I can easily find A, right? Um, I'm gonna use the second equation, it looks a little bit easier. So A, so a minus and then negative b is negative two equals three right minus negative two equals three that means that a plus two equals three that means that sorry i couldn't see that that means that from here a equals one right a equals one. Now I have A, I have B, I'll go back to the original system and I'll use one of those three equations, it doesn't matter which one I use, to find C. Um, the third one, the original third equation looks exists to me. So from here, I'll say A, one, so I'm plugging in, in this equation, a one plus B plus negative two minus C equals zero. So what is C from there? Um, it's one minus two minus C equals zero. Negative one minus C equals zero. If I add C to both sides, I'll find that negative one equals C. So it, C equals negative one. So what does this mean? It means that we were able to decompose our original um, expression, rational expression. And that's how it's gonna look like. So I'm gonna go back to the original integral. Right here, we found A, B, and C. You know what, I'm gonna make notes for myself. So we found that A is one, B is negative two, and then C is negative one. Okay, that means that this integral integral of this rational expression, I can split into three parts. It's gonna be integral of one over one over three X minus one. Um, now, since it's negative two, so that's negative two, I can put that negative in the front, minus two over 
x minus 1. And then, again, it is negative 1, so I can put this negative in the front. So minus 1 over, and the denominator is x minus 1 squared. x minus 1 squared dx. And now, since I have a difference of functions here, I can integrate each separately. I will separate this process into three parts. So I will integrate the first rational expression, second rational expression, and third rational expression. But the point is that I can now tackle each integral um, using pretty basic integration techniques. So let's try that. So here's part one. For this part, we can use just the basic u substitution, right? So if we let u be equal to denominator, 3x minus 1, then du is 3dx. Um, okay, so the denominator is 3x, uh, u is the denominator, right? So that's u. Um, now, what is dx? From here, dx is 1 third du dx. So it means that dx I'm going to replace with 1 third du. Okay, so this constant 1 third I'm going to put in the front, 1 third integral 1 over u du and that is just 1 third ln of u which is the same as 1 third uh, plus c of course plus c and that's 1 third ln absolute value of u is from our substitution here it's 3x minus 1 plus c you know what, I'm not going to be writing constants here. Um, remember, these are just the parts. So when I put this all together, I'll just put plus C at the very end. Um, so, so that I don't have to rename my constants. So I'll just put plus C in my final, final answer. So that's, that's the first part. Now, here's part two. part 2. Integral of 2 over x minus 1 dx. Pretty much the same story, right? The denominator I can call u. So u equals x minus 1, or actually even easier, then du equals 1 dx, or just dx. So dx is just du. That means that, oh, and that constant I can put in the front, 2 integral 1 over u du. That's uh, 2 ln of absolute value of u. And that is to ln, the absolute value of u is x minus 1, x minus 1. Okay, so that's part 2. Answer, and now part 3. Part 3 is this integral, and again, we can use basic u substitution. I will let x minus 1 to be equal u. So u equals x minus 1. It means that du is 1 dx or just dx. So that is du. So my integral is 1 over u squared du. Now that's same as u to the, to the power negative 2 du. And if I apply antiderivative here, it's going to be I need to add 1 and divide by that number. So negative 2 plus 1, it's u to the power negative 1 divided by negative 1, right? So that's same as, oh, let's see, um, that negative 1 I can put just as negative in the front, and then u to the power negative 1, it's same as 1 over u. That's same as 1 over, uh, or negative, I should say negative 1 over x minus 1. Okay, so that's part 3. And now it's time to put this all together. Let me write it like this. Okay, so that's that's my original integral, right? That's my original integral. So the answer will be the following. So I have to put result of the first part integration. That is, I'm looking um, right above what I wrote. So it's one third a ln of absolute value of 3x minus 1. That was part 1 result. Minus, minus the second result. Minus 
to a ln of absolute value of x minus 1 and then minus the third result. Now my third result I can even see here. Uh, it's right here but um, I can see how it has its own negative sign so I'll, I'll be careful with this. Minus negative 1 over x minus 1 like that. And of course you know it would make sense to just fix that sign. I will rewrite 1 over 3 and ln of absolute value of 3x minus 1, absolute value, x minus 1, minus 2 ln of absolute value of x minus 1, and then plus 1 over x minus 1. So that will be something I will box. It looks good enough. I don't think anything else really has to be simplified. So that's going to be the answer here. So first you perform partial fraction decomposition um, and then it's good to just take care of each part separately so you're not get confused. I did mention one important note. I kind of took a risk here and I didn't check if I decomposed fractions, fraction, the original expression correctly. So, so before you start integrating, it's highly recommended that you check if you decompose fractions correctly. So how do you check? Well, you just add them together. And if you get back to the original expression, well, you're good. You can go ahead and, and now integrate. So yeah, that's, that's the process.